Dr. Jairaman Mahadevan is currently serving as Director, Research Department, Krishnamacharya Yoga Mandiram, Chennai, Scientific Industrial Research Organization. He has a PhD in Sanskrit from the Department of Sanskrit, University of Madras. His thesis was titled, The Doctrine of Tantra Yukti, a Study. He has presented 20 papers in various national and international conferences and has given talks in universities, colleges and institutions of national eminence. He has also written books, organized seminars, funded projects and been the guide for students pursuing their PhD. His areas of interest are Yoga, Tantra Yukti, Vedanta, Sanskrit, Sanskrit Poetic Literature and Manuscript Studies. I invite Dr. Ma uh, Jairaman Mahadevan to come up on stage. Om Namo Vache Yacho Dita Yacha Nudita Tasye Vache Namo Namaha Adraniyaha Sabhadhyakshaha Samanyaha Sabhasadascha Suprabhatam Samskrita Ujjivana Vishaye Mama Patramasti अतः आदौ कानिचन वा वचनानि संस्कृते न व्याहर्तव्यानि इति मत्वा संस्कृते न वदामि अग्रे तु पत्रम आंग्ल भाषाया में वास्ती अतः प्रायश्चित्त रूपे न आरंभे संस्कृत वचनानि हम वदामि एतानि वचनानि मम्मा पत्रमस्ति डेथ ऑफ संस्कृत इति विषये शेल्डन पोला के न यद्रचितम् तस्य एकस्य अम्शस्य विमर्शा Maya Asmin Patre Kriyate Tad Yathamati Aham Aduna Prastavami So the death of Sanskrit paper of Sheldon Polak is well known It appeared in the journal Comparative Studies in Society and History in 2001 It's a detailed paper of about 34 pages But I have just chosen one statement as a Puro Paksha from the paper and presented my analysis on that That statement is Government feeding tubes and oxygen tanks may try to preserve the language in a state of, the language here is Sanskrit, in a state of quasi-animation, but most observers would agree that in some crucial way, Sanskrit is dead. So this is my Puro Paksha statement that I have chosen, and I present my analysis. And uh, why this statement, and why just one statement? Firstly, death of Sanskrit appears in the year 2001. In the beginning of the paper, Death of Sanskrit, Pollock states that <clears throat> since the advent of the BJP government under Vajpayee, substantial new funding was made available for the propagation of Sanskrit, which includes announcement of the year 2000 as the year of Sanskrit. Probably this apparent spike in funding for Sanskrit studies seemed to have created a sense of unease and triggered Pollock to conceptualize and eventually pen this paper. As can be observed, the government feeding tubes oxygen tank statement directly indicates that trigger, which is at the root of this paper. Hence, I chose this statement. And secondly, it is also the first statement in this article in which Pollock unceremoniously states that Sanskrit is dead. If this statement is shown as untenable, it will symbolically indicate the lack of validity of the other arguments as well. I have taken recourse to the Sthali Pulakan Nyaya, that is, examining one bead of rice to see whether the rest of the rice in the boiling pot is cooked or not. Now, before going into uh, the Uttara Paksha, I would like to highlight the approach that I have adopted for Uttara Paksha. Shruti, Yukti and Anubhuti is well known in Shastras as the three factors that determine validity of any given idea or ideal. I, have, I cling on to this pattern and I attempt my Uttara Paksha based on that. And uh, Shruti is Vedic statement, Yukti is reasoning that follows Shruti, and Anubhuti is the direct perception of truth. And in answering the question as to whether Sanskrit's perceived quasi-animation state is due to government support, to me, first comes my Anubhuti, that's experience. I am in the field of Sanskritam for the past decade and a half, as a teacher and a student. So I have studied in a gurukulam that had no government recognition or funding, I work in a yoga institution which again is sustained by the tradition and legacy of Shri Krishnamacharya and the Shraddha of people from India and abroad and certainly not by any government funding. And also as a volunteer of Samskrita Bharati, for the past two decades, I have met thousands of people whose love for Samskritam has nothing to do with government. 
based on this anubhuti of mine i can clearly refute polak's statement that uh, government oxygen tanks or feeding tubes are not required for survival of samskritam samskrita survives and will majestically survive in its own glory for the innate values that it possesses but going by our own shastraic tenets anubhuti with able support from shruti and yukti will only stand the test of time shruti and yukti in this issue are from the first samskrita commission report as i have stated earlier shruti is vedas but regarding the status of samskrita in the country beyond doubt the first samskrita commission report can be accorded the status equal to that of the vedas vedas are attained by tapas yugante antarhitan vedan setihasan maharshayah lebhire tapasa purvam anugnyata swayam bhuva this is a famous verse which says that vedas are attained by tapas and the labor of the seven eminent scholars for 18 months during 1956-58 who were part of the first samskrita commission is no less than tapas hence in a sense the first samskrita commission report that was created by them is shruti for me in this matter and one finds yuktis also in this report vis a vis the statement of polak it's also interesting to note that polak conveniently omits any reference to this 1957 samskrita commission report which is a unique document that possesses real facts regarding status of samskrita in country but it can be seen that uh, polak has ramaged some sahitya academy records of 1955 etc for his death of sanskrit paper but he omits this very important uh, sanskrit commission report further as would be seen in this paper many views expressed in the five decade old first sanskrita commission report still hold good and are valid even today and a little more about what sanskrita commission is the first sanskrita commission was formed in the year 1956 it was headed by dr suniti kumar chatterjee seven other eminent scholars were part of the committee including professor padma bhushan uh, professor v raghavan of madras university and professor dandekar and um, among others they traveled to 14 states visiting 56 centers and interviewed over 1100 persons i need to mention here that alongside the first sanskrita commission report i have also consulted and quoted in relevant places the 2016 mhrd uh, committee report um the committee was formed to suggest vision and road map for development of sanskrita for the next 10 years under the current government i have quoted this recent document to show that what the sanskrita commission stated then is relevant even now now in analyzing the uh, purva paksha statement i have split it into two that is polak statement government feeding tubes and oxygen tanks may try to preserve the language in a state of quasi animation part 1 part 2 but most observers would agree that in some crucial way sanskrita is dead now for the first half of the statement i read two implications in it the first implication is sans government uh, obviously sans government sponsorship perceived quasi animate state of sanskrita is not possible and the second implication is public and non government players did not have any role at all in safeguarding sanskrita as sanskrita has never been the language of the masses so these are the two implications that i read in the statement of polak now moving on in this slide i attempt a reply based on the commission's report to the first implication that is without government support no uh, samskrita survival is not possible the samskrita commission views governmental support to samskrita from a startlingly different viewpoint the commission states and i quote the authorities did not allow the traditional system either to die out or to flourish but by a process of nominal assistance retained it alongside the modern education in an unhealthy condition ever subject to difficulty always open to criticism this statement strikes at the root how should government support to sanskrit be looked at right from the beginning government support to sanskrit is not any oxygen tank but a slow euthanasia to say the least the attitude of government from the very beginning was not to give sanskrit a oxygen tank but to keep it in a despicable condition so that it would die a natural death this is about the authorities of the pre independence era did the situation change in the early decades post independence to this again the commission states and i quote the commission in the course of its tours could see a feeling of regret and disappointment among the people that no positive step, steps had been taken for helping sanskrit the ultimate result of this has been that sanskrit has not been allowed to enjoy even the status and facilities it had under the british raj now how about the oxygen government uh, government oxygen tank statement after seven decades of independence the situation is pretty much the same to this i bring in a quote from the 2016 mhrd committee report and it says it is a fact that uh, during the british period salary of sanskrit teachers was 
half the salary of the teachers of other subjects due to which sanskrit was looked down upon for long even today in most of the states sanskrit teachers who teach at secondary and higher secondary level vidyalayas are given primary teachers salary primary level teachers salary teachers who teach ug and pg level sanskrit mahavidyalayas are given the salary of secondary grade teachers so as revealed by the above statements from the sanskrit commission and mhrd report when governments all along did not have any real intention to support sanskrit due to various reasons how is then polak justified in taking government support as an indicator to the status of sanskrit wrong indicator and wrong inference so this is with regard to the uh, first implication <laughs> moving on to the second implication that the people and agencies other than government has no role in supporting and continuing unbroken tradition of sanskrit learning in the country this point and response to it forms the bulk of my paper in course of the discussions on this point based on the first sanskrita commission the organic relationship between sanskrita and society is also brought to light so on the perusal of the the commission's report we find seven contributing factors other than the government that sustained and support some sams supported sanskrita through the ages in our country these seven factors are the maharajas of princely states hindu religious institutions non brahmin caste people of non brahmin castes and other religions individual traditional pundits nationalistic spirit voluntary academies and organization and finally people in general these are the seven factors and uh, now coming to the first factor that is the maharajas the commission report beautifully sums up the role of maharajas and i quote apart from honoring sanskrit pandits and musicians in darbars on occasions of domestic celebrations and national festivals maharajas did two important piece of service to the sanskrit studies one organization into libraries of their palace collections of sanskrit manuscripts and two setting up of sanskrit colleges the third role of the maharajas in promotion of sanskrit is indeed worth noting the maharajas inspired the commission report states inspired by the example of the princes the zamindars and small landlords and merchants also founded sanskrit colleges unquote compare and contrast the attitude of highly uninspiring role of the government that we saw earlier exposed by the commission's report which wanted to maintain sanskrit in an unhealthy condition ever subject to difficulty always open to criticism and the maharajas who inspired others to follow suit in support of sanskrita how many maharajas were involved in such act of uh, sanskrita promotion virtually everyone the commission states darbanga vidyanagaram baroda nagpur jaipur indore gwalior mysore trivancore kapurthala patiala jammu and kashmir to mention only the few prominent states started their own sanskrita colleges it becomes evident from the list of the princely states above that even in the midst of british apathy towards sanskrita it is these princes and kings who truly supported sanskrita studies in the country now we move to the second factor which is very obvious that is so it's very brief i present it only very briefly that the hindu religious institutions supported sanskrita mats temples and religious institutions established similar colleges etc so i just move on now moving on to the third factor which is very important to me is that uh, when we speak of survival of sanskrita and hindu religious institutions supporting them the perception created and sustained by divisive elements would lead us to read the word hindu as brahmins and brahminical institutions the commission's report very clearly rejects this view uh, view point factually the following facts can be gleaned from the commission's report in this regard the commission states that in andhra and kerala language of non brahmins is highly saturated with sanskrita in kerala especially iravas tias moplas christians study sanskritam in madhya pradesh lucknow and chennai muslim boys and girls anglo indians study sanskritam in bengal muslim ayurveda practitioners study sanskritam these are not outdated facts even today in the media we see, we see reports of people from other religions excelling in sanskrita studies to quote a few media current media reports is muslim girls tops kerala sanskrit vedanta course these are the news headlines that i'm just reading out in 2009 muslim girl tops sanskrit pg exam 2006 kerala lady becomes the first muslim to learn doctorate in sanskrit 1999 report muslim girl secures first from jharkhand learning sanskrita for a better future muslim girl secures first rank topping the tamil nadu state in uh, sanskrit which is in 2012 muslim scholar nahid abidi awarded padma shri for the year 2014 so these are just few contemporary examples that establish the fact that what sanskrita commission stated with regard to the role of other communities in studying sanskrita is very still very relevant significantly the commission states that the role of other communities regarding sanskrita was not limited only to learning the language to quote it must be further pointed out that large mass of literature in sanskrita was not produced by any particular community 
Several instances can be quoted of non-Brahmin and non-Hindu authors who have made significant contributions to Sanskrit literature. It's definitely wrong to assume that Sanskrit represents only the religious literature of the Hindus. Unquote. So, this is the factor. And then, then we move to the next factor, which is very important again, which is the uh, traditional individual traditional pundits. The commission records the contribution of the pundits, their level of knowledge, and also the method by which they maintained their level of knowledge. I remind here that Pollock simply mentions government support as the indicator of status of Sanskrit in the country, whereas from this factor, that is traditional Sanskrit pundits, it becomes evident that Sanskrit lives through individuals in this country and not through institutions like government. So apart from the Maharajas and religious institutions, the commission sees this traditional pundits as the third important channel through which Sanskrit tradition uh, continued to flow. It notes that, the, and I quote, in fact, this tradition of one pundit schools was alive in all regions in India in a greater or lesser degree. The commission further adds that the tempo of modernization had not fully swept away the pundit of the traditional type and his institutions. On the issue of level of scholarship, in the existing pundits, the commission reports very sincerely. It states that we are sorry to note that the number of outstanding pundits of the old type was generally not large. In some states, they could be counted on one's fingers. In the same way, the commission also clarifies that some pundits, however, did continue their literary activity. A few of them have, under the inspiration of modern research, produced critical and expository treatises in Sanskrit, in regional, regional languages, etc. The commission also states that we also found that Sanskrit muse was still an inspiration and that the pundits everywhere wrote poems and plays in Sanskrit. Of course, Sanskrit was very freely used as a means of communication, etc. and so on. So it's a commonplace knowledge to all of us here that even today such scholars exist in our country and a few such are here in this very venue. I saw about in the schedule that many Shastrartha pundits will be here. So, for the purpose of the record, even the MHRD 2016 report, committee report states that such traditional tradition of individual pundits exist and states that efforts are to be put in to rejuvenate that tradition. So regarding the modus operandi by which scholars maintain their scholarship, the commission maintains that Shastra, Sabhas and Sadas by religious and private institutions are the method, which we still see happening in various parts of the country even to this day. So much so for the fourth factor that supports Sanskrit learning in the country. Now moving to the next factor, which the commission identifies as the supporting aspect for Sanskrit in the country, it says uh, the, it is the nationalistic spirit. The new awakening in the country of a nationalistic spirit which sought to make up for the drawbacks in scheme of education on the cultural side by founding institutions of cultural importance. Thanks to these, a network of Sanskrit colleges and quasi-modern setup came up into being." Unquote. So the commission makes an insightful addition to this relationship between Sanskrit and nationalistic spirit. It's not one way. It says that it's a symbiotic relationship. It's a mutual relationship and not one way. And uh, as Sanskrit benefited from the spirit of nationalism, the nation's solidarity was boosted by Sanskrit. It says, the commission report says, a distinguished group of India's thought leaders opined that Sanskrit can very well be rehabilitated as a pan-Indian speech to strengthen the solidarity of modern India. Further, the commission states, a witness appearing before this commission suggested that if the Sanskrit commission had come before the state's reorganization commission, many of the recent bickerings in our national life could have been avoided. Unquote. Now let's move on to the penultimate factor that contributed to the sustenance and survival of uh, tradition of Sanskrit. This is a decisive factor that deals a body blow to Pollock's view that due to government oxygen tanks, uh, Sanskrit appear to have survived. This factor is the voluntary Sanskrit organizations. The commission states, for outside these educational institutions, there is in the country a network of voluntary organizations. The number and the extent of planned activities of these private bodies only underline the need for supplementing what is being done for Sanskrit through the official setup." Unquote. This hits the nail on the head against Pollock's oxygen tank comment. In the view of the commission, government is not required to provide oxygen tanks. It's enough if the government gives vitamin supplements. It is the question of nourishment and not survival of Sanskrit that depends on the government. The zeal and the impetus to preserve and perpetuate Sanskrit rests with the people. And now the last factor for the survival of Sanskrit as could be seen from the commission's report is people in general. 
द कमीशन नोट्स दैट इन एवरी कॉर्नर वन कुड फाइंड स्पीकर्स ऑफ संस्कृत द कमीशन स्टेट्स इट इज पॉसिबल फॉर एन इंडियन और अ फॉरिनर नोइंग नो अदर लैंग्वेज दैन संस्कृत टू एबल टू फाइंड थ्रू आउट द होल ऑफ इंडिया सम पर्सन एवरी वेयर हू कैन कम्युनिकेट विथ हिम इन संस्कृत द कमीशन दिस स्टेटमेंट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू मी टेक्स नोट ऑफ द लव एंड वेनरेशन ऑफ संस्कृत बाई पीपल in a remarkable statement the commission records the people of india love and venerate sanskrita with a feeling which is next only to that of patriotism towards mother india the feeling permeates the common man the literator the educationalist the businessman the administrator and even the politician everybody realizes its cultural importance and knows that whatever one cherishes as the best and the noblest in things indian is embedded in sanskritam unquote significantly the commission notes that it is sanskrita that binds the people of the country and I, and i quote a general feeling was there that if the binding force of sanskrita was taken away the people of india would cease to feel that they were parts of a single culture and a single nation moving on it, the commission also make an em, makes an emphatic statement stating that the verdict of public opinion has been in favor of preserving traditional style of sanskrita education and a final quote from the commission's report merits attention regarding the role of people in general towards preservation of sanskrita and i quote in the course of our tours we noticed everywhere an unmistakable awakening of the cultural consciousness of the people there was a keen awareness of the importance of sanskrita among people at large and we soon realized which is very important here this portion that a complete picture of the situation regarding sanskrit could not be had only by visiting schools colleges universities and pathashalas and quote so if patashala schools and colleges themselves cannot be the true indicators of real situation of sanskrita in the country then it is very clear that government as has been shown which has a stepmotherly attitude for sanskrita and its support can never be the indicator of situation of sanskrita in the country and thus polak's statement that only government oxygen tank helps survival of sanskrita is grossly incorrect and his pronouncement of death of sanskrita based on it is untenable to say the least yeah and uh, thus with the help of the seven factors presented in the sanskrita commission report the second implication to the first half of the polak statement uh, has been refuted and uh, now let's briefly focus on the second half of the statement where he says but most observers would agree that in some crucial way sanskrita is dead now latching on to the word observers i bring in a set of observers from the first sanskrita commission report to counter his view stating that sanskrita is not dead these observers do not accept that sanskrita is dead the first set of observers is uh, from the sanskrita commission itself the co- commission very beautifully states that sanskrita permeated all aspects of indian life and so there could be no question of reviving it unquote so when there is no death where is the question of its revival this is what the commission opines and more emphatically the commission states even at the present day sanskrit is very very living they have used the word very very twice in the report itself because of a large number of people use sanskrita in their conversation when they come from different parts of the country and composition in sanskrita in both prose and verse goes on almost unabated it has been possible to write a history of recent sanskrita literature as it has developed say during the last century and half entire conferences are conducted wholly or at least to a very large extent through the medium of sanskrita and this was about the first set of observers who will not accept sanskrit as dead and the second set of observers quoted in the first sanskrit commission is from the official languages commission of 1948 it, that commission also sees that sanskrit was best suited for spiritual training as it embodies the element of morality in large sense so when the university education commission looks at futuristic role for sanskrit where is the question of death of sanskrit now moving on the official languages commission of 1955 which is again quoted in the first sanskrit commission report it says that sanskrit has an obvious bearing on the study of contemporary forms of speech all our languages to meet every new situation habitually drafted upon the vast and inexhaustible treasure house of vocabulary phrase idiom and concept comprised by the sanskrit literature so this again emphasizes contemporary and futuristic role of sanskrit and then comes an observer whom even polak might not consider overruling Jawaharlal Nehru Nehru is quoted by Sanskrit Commission Nehru states Sanskrit is a language uh, Sanskrit language and literature so long as this endures and influences the life of peop- our people so long the basic genius of india will continue which clearly indicates that Jawaharlal Nehru also considered Sanskrit has endured and the basic genius of india is intact 
The Commission's report also brings in another statement from Jawaharlal Nehru to imply that Sanskrit is not only alive, but it is the language that has the potential to even out the balance in education, which is dangerously leaning towards only the sciences. This is again a futuristic role for Sanskrit, which might not be possible if Sanskrit is already dead. The Commission report reads on this particular aspect that uh, it is indeed highly significant that as Prime Minister Shri Nehru told this Commission, Professor Oppenheimer, the great American atomic scientist, spends considerable time in reading Sanskrit and Pali. Unquote. So, moving on to the next set of observers who would not accept Sanskrit as dead, we come to the Western universities, one of, from one of which Polak is here. <laughs> Polak has presented his ideas. So, the, common, the commission states that the West knows India as Sanskrit India. And whenever an Indian university celebrates its jubilee, a Western university normally sends its felicitations in Sanskrit address. Adding to this, even recently in 2007, when the Prime Minister, the then, sorry, then President APJ Abdul Kalam, when he visited Greece, he was greeted by his Greece counterpart Carlos Papulias in Sanskrit, Yavana Deshe Bhavataha Swagatam, which was widely reported in the media then. Thus, going by the views of these observers, we find that Sanskrit is not dead, but alive and kicking, whereby the second half of Pollock's statement has been refuted. And uh, I'm summing up, finish. Thus, we see that uh, considered in parts and whole, one of the very initial statements of Pollock in his article, Death of Sanskrit, does not stand the test of facts and reason. And reverting back to the Stali Pulak and Nyaya, this bead of rice on examination turns out to be uncooked, indicating what one might expect from the rest of the content in the part. And uh, I sign off with an inadvertent admission of Pollock in his paper, Death of Sanskrit. He states that cultivation of Sanskrit largely constitutes Nostalgia for those directly involved and for outsiders, it is a source of bemusement. Yes, for a rank outsider like Pollock, as per his own admission, cultivation of Sanskrit and its promotion, etc., and its survival, etc., may be an act of bemusement. But for the insiders whose views are adequately presented from the first Sanskrit Commission report, uh, for them, for us, Sanskrit is the basis of our national culture and solidarity and will provide base for the promotion of international understanding in the East and the West." Unquote. And hence, role and status of Sanskrit cannot be trivialized by attempts like death of Sanskrit by the likes of Polak. And last uh, point that I would like to make is, yes, by this paper, we have seen that uh, I have attempted to uh, uh, present my Uttara Paksha to Polak's uh, statement that I have taken as Pura Paksha. But what is the um, uh, takeaway for people who work in the field of Sanskrit for the promotion currently. So I see the identification of the seven factors are the real takeaway from the uh, Sanskrit Commission report. So let us work in strengthening these seven factors to strengthen Sanskritam. Thank you. Uh, namaste, Mamana. Bharata Haiti, Sanskrit Bharati Karakarta. Pingluruta Agachami. Tatra um, Dviti Bhagaha is the most observers is the Pavan observers is the Eka Shabdam speaker to one another Pancha Ganaha Santi the Uktavan Tatra most Vishi Api Kimapi Prativadam Astiva Iti Prashnaha Tatpariam Nagrihitan most Iti Padasi Kimochitim most observers Pavan Pancha Ganaha observer one two three Iti Bhan Uktavan Kalu Tatu most is the Vishiam Tatu Pancha Ganeshu Anyatamaha Okay. Or minority or majority of the question. So, most observers are the same. Observer is the same. If you have the observer is the same, the observer is the minority. Hmm. Hmm. So, now, the Vaishishtyam is the same. So, most observers are the same. But, the most is the same. So, most observers are 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 the same. Nakevalahi Pratigna, Pratigna, the Martham Sadhe Editi. Then a Kevalam Pratigna Krita, Maya Eva Tasya, Tatropasta Panam Kritam Varta. Yeah, I was recommended by Saurav Sharma. My name is Jasmeet. And uh, uh, I mean, regarding patronage, uh, uh, earlier it was done by uh, the rulers, uh, the Maharajas, and all. Now, in a new liberal world uh, which we live in, where business is everything, is the business community uh, coming forward to uh, take up that role? Uh, because they are the new Maharajas. <laughs> and I uh, think. Uh, yeah, actually, the commission reports also, in the, in the, in the first Sanskrit the commission report also, we see uh, the commission identifies Chettiars. Chettiars are the Vaishyas. 
uh, it endless how various uh, uh, vaishya community people from all over the country they are ready to support sanskrita then it is also true because the same lineage or the same blood continues and as uh, in my experience as a volunteer of sanskrita bharati i have also seen many people interested to contribute uh, this business people as you mentioned they are very happy and interested to contribute to sanskritas see between the first uh, sanskrit commission and now huh. the breaking india forces also have multiplied uh, amazingly right true, true so how do you respond to that part uh, because at least in uh, uh, if you look at the old congress kind of people they were all probably uh, even learned sanskrit etc but a current generation of people have no connection with any of these things so there is a difference between the first uh, sanskrit commission era and now hmm. and uh, rajiv malhotra has written about uh, breaking india you know, situation is far more uh, you know the opposite side you might call it Yeah. is much more organized true so what how do you respond to that yeah again uh, as i begin began with shruti yukti and anubhuti so i, I again go by uh, anubhuti in the sense my experience in the far past 15 years as a teacher and student of sanskrita and as part of voluntary organization like sanskrita bharati who pe- meets people on a day to day basis so there is actually even in a state like tamil nadu people will say it, it is where the dravidian forces are very strongly rooted and people are against anything from the north but even there community classes in sanskrita are uh, overflowing uh, mostly in north where I, uh, north i observe that it is based on the schools and colleges where uh, the sanskrita promotion activities are going on whereas in south in tamil nadu i see that uh, it is community activity or people from family or people from such communities they come in large numbers which means the love of love for sanskrita and veneration for sanskrita is still intact that's my observation in the past decade and a half excuse me sir just to answer your question uh, you said do uh, communities the business class fund uh, sanskrit studies i am from infinity foundation india and i must say that we have two scholars of ours being funded by a chetiar family uh, from chennai so they do <laughs> to help me you can do two things you can go to the subscribe button on my youtube and subscribe we need more subscribers there uh, secondly i get lots of emails on people saying how do we donate how can we help you uh, you go to rajimalhotra.com or you go to infinityfoundation.com and you can hit the donate button you can donate in dollars there are different ways mentioned if you want to donate in rupees there is a column called uh, infinity foundation india and you click that and there are instructions on how you can donate in india